Last April, my lover, Warren, <laughs> last April, my lover, Warren, died, and um, I was going to send his ashes to George Bush with a protest letter. And um, I talked with friends from New York who, I, I felt like that was going to be real private, you know, like no one would know about it. And they suggested bringing it to the floor of ACT UP. They said they would personally support it. So they said, you know, when you're in New York, why don't you bring it to the group? So I, I presented it as um, a next step in the activism. Um, I mean, lots of people have been talking about if they die, having their bodies used in a political funeral. And I know there are people out there now who, who have AIDS, who have made arrangements for their, if they die of AIDS, for their bodies to be used, <coughs> excuse me, for their bodies to be used in some sort of political way, whether it's a political funeral being, you know, in a coffin with being carried to the streets or thrown over the White House fence or left in their particular city on the steps of their city hall or brought to their senator's office. Um, people are making these arrangements now. At this stage, there, there may be as many as 15 um, people who are bringing ashes of people they love to die of AIDS to be deposited there, and then there are going to be hundreds of other people marching with us, uh, helping us the best they can to actually get to the White House lawn. And then others just marching in support. So that's the, um, the reason we're here this weekend. Also, what well, we chose this weekend because the, uh, the quilt, the Names Project quilt, is, is here this weekend. And I specifically wanted there to be a counterpoint to uh, the quilt's approach to bringing home what's happening with AIDS. Robert Marino, John Keane, Brent Cooper, Mark Orlick, William Mazzello, Bob, Cristiano Palomino, Eric Erickson, Ron Alley, Tom DiGeronimo, Gavin Bunch, Doug Kimball, Jerry Clark, Mark Bovey, Rick Nazarena, Ron Goldstein, Kurt Bennett, Will Tucker, Dennis George, Harry Freeze, Rick Graham, Everett Wooden, Donald Driver, Jack Pastor, Michael Zapata, Jim Milford, Carl Roulette, Dennis Brown, I think the quilt itself does good stuff and is moving. Still, it's like making something beautiful out of the epidemic. And I felt like doing something like this is a way of showing there's nothing beautiful about it. You know, this is what I'm left with. I've got a, a box full of ashes and bone chips. You know, there's no beauty in that. Um, and I, I felt like a statement like this, throwing these on the White House lawn, is like saying, this is what George Bush has done. You know, this is what him and Ronald Reagan before him have done. Bring the dead to your door. We won't take it anymore. Bring the dead to your door. We won't take it anymore. Bring the dead to your door. We won't take it anymore. Bring the dead to your door. Bring the dead to your door.
Yesterday, tens of thousands of people paraded past the White House to demonstrate their concern about the disease AIDS. A celebrated member of your commission, Magic Johnson, uh, quit saying that uh, there was too much inaction. Where is this widespread feeling coming from that your administration is not doing enough about AIDS? Coming from the political process, we have increased our funding for AIDS. We've doubled it on research and on every other aspect of it. My request for this year was $4.9 billion for AIDS, 10 times as much for AIDS victim as per cancer victim. I think that we're showing the proper compassion and concern. So I can't tell you where it's coming from, but I am very much concerned about AIDS, and I believe that we've got the best researchers in the world out there at NIH working the problem. We're funding them. I wish there was more money, but we're funding them far more than any time in the past, and we're going to keep on doing that. I don't know. I was a little disappointed in Magic because uh, he came to me, and I said, now, if you see something we're not doing, Look, get a hold of me, call me, let me know. He went to one meeting, and then we heard that he was stepping down. So he's been replaced by Mary Fisher, who electrified the Republican convention by talking about the compassion and the concern that we feel. It was a beautiful moment, and I think she'll do a first-class job on that commission. So I think the appeal is, yes, we care. And the other thing is, part of AIDS, it's one of the few diseases where behavior matters. And I once called on somebody, well, change your behavior. If the behavior you're using uh, prone to cause AIDS, change the behavior. Next thing I know, one of these ACT UP groups is out saying, Bush ought to change his behavior. You can't talk about it rationally. That the extremes are hurting the AIDS cause. To go into a Catholic mass in a beautiful cathedral in New York under the cause of helping in AIDS and start throwing condoms around in the mass, I'm sorry, I think it sets back the cause. We cannot move to the extreme. We've got to care. We've got to continue everything we can at the federal and the local level. Barbara, I think, is doing a superb job in destroying the myth about AIDS. And all of us are in this fight together. All of us care. Do not go to the extreme. Um, I, I got to watch the people depositing the ashes on the White House. A woman from the local Washington, D.C. area interviewed me and asked me, did I see what happened? I said, yes, and she asked about this. And I said, the purpose of these people coming here is because George Bush and his administration has done nothing with our lives, so we bring our dead to you. And they were determined to deposit the ashes of their loved ones on the White House steps and with what those horses, not even wild horses, could have kept those people away. Two things. One is the inspirational quality. I saw that mother with her ashes, that the one everyone's talking about, and after she threw them, she turned around and went, yes! <laughs> <laughs> we all felt that at other things. And we, if we could re co opt her rage and her grief from the quilt to us, we were successful. And if we could do this for us, who gives a shit about the media. It was for us. The action was to deliver the ashes, and we did it. And I also want to remind everyone that what George Bush talked about last night when he said ACT UP was stop the church almost three years ago. He didn't talk about Kenna Bunkport. He didn't talk about Campaign 92. He did not talk about what had taken place that day. And we need to remember that stop the church it's pretty easy to convince people about what an evil group of perverts we are, right? No! But, but... <laughs> yesterday. Everyone should be proud. This action was coordinated by Shane, who was relatively new to ACT UP and never organized an action before. Uh, in, the, uh, in the van on the way down, he was going to kill me for repeating this. He confessed that he'd been having nightmares all week about this action, and that one of them was that he would all depart Washington afterwards and leave him behind. <laughs> He responded and the stage was, let's do it! <laughs> uh, we were actually very touched by that. And at any rate, the next day, when I saw him pressed against the White House fence by all our bodies, 
kneeling and weeping as that was poured over him, I felt for certain that he would never have that nightmare again. But if this action was cathartic for Shane and others, as it was, it was cathartic in a different way for people like David Robinson, who was a founding member of ACT UP, and as you've heard, inspired this action, and me, who helped give it some voice. Because in a certain sense, it was our funeral too, in that we were not so much leading it as passing through it and handing the baton of leadership or what you will to a new generation of AIDS activists who with this action wholly and completely emerge so that the ashes which we mourn are also the ashes from which we rise. And my most fervent hope for this new generation of activists is that before you have to take on the burden of inspiring yet another generation of activists, your work will be done. One of the things, as we were getting up there and getting closer, I remember um, I was talking, it's hard, it's hard for me to explain some of these things to people who aren't activists, like I was telling people we're going to go do this activist, you know, on the right, and I try to explain very well and let you get, well, what are you doing that, you know, the sacrilegious, and I called my grandmother, um, who's very black and very southern, the week before, <laughs> I was going to explain this to grandma, and, I, you know, I had my own preconceived notions of what she was saying, and, what she, and she, there was a pause, and she goes, well, that's wonderful. And I said, like, well, what? You know? And she said, well, you know, she, she called me baby. She called me baby. She goes, well, baby, what we used to do uh, when they used to lynch, she's from the lynching time, they would go out and take the ropes after they lynched people. They would burn the ropes, and they put them ashes, and they would say, see, we burned your tool, and you can use it against us no more. And so as we were pinned against the fence, and these horses were Literally, I mean, horses were like gonna try. I was a fright, and I thought his horse was gonna try me. I was, just, I was, I just, I just saw grandma, and I just saw here people were throwing these asses over, and people were chanting, it's like, you know, it was, it was just speechless. It's like we were returning to. It was like George Bush, you have no power over. This has never been done before. I mean, I call people back home, and this is people like this is a great idea. You know, other oppressed groups can bring their asses to the White House. I mean, let's use the White House as a dumping ground for ashes. I mean, <laughs> wondering um, how involved were the other act ups in other places and what was their participation and um, because it's, I, it was my impression that there were people there that it was active and that's great and we need to keep going in that direction of doing actions with people from different cities and involving more people but could you tell us because I don't know um, I, can, I can get yes and no tell you the messages on my machine that I answered were from all over the country many of them from ACT UP who so got the word through the ACT UP network I know ACT UP Connecticut ACT UP one of the ACT UP New Jersey's um, uh, ACT UP New York the way the the spiritual parent of yesterday's event, and that's David Warnerovich. The second time I met David was at the FDA action he had on his back, um, on the back of his jacket. When I die, put, throw my body on the steps of the FDA. And I, and I think yesterday would, would have been very special for David. Um, one of the things I always think about in Washington is graffiti I saw years ago on the Duke Ellington Bridge that said, pigs will fall and someone had graffitied under it, new pigs will rise. We only have three weeks before the election, but it ain't over yet. We've got to do this again, I'm sure. Answer his phone number, address, uh, date of birth, and name, right? Yep. How many people here are going to be marshalling? So BC is going to leave the people who are not risking arrest inside the fence, while the people who have earned and people who are risking arrest will continue outside the fence. And then that will go around right to the White House fence.
only too happy for all of us simply to make beautiful panels. And I'm not maligning the quilt. It's very useful, it's very important, but it's very beautiful. And it does make a lot of people feel better. On some level, I heard people out there as they walked among the panels, sort of sighing about, oh, this is really beautiful. It's so good that this is happening. And we made such a wonderful panel. And I would wonder, is this making you feel like this is okay in some way? Because it's not. What we are doing is showing everyone who sees us at the White House, who sees any of this in the papers or on TV, who passes it on the street, we are showing them the actual results of what that White House and this administration has done. They have turned people we love into ashes and bone chips and corpses that should not be hidden. And from this point on, I hope you all agree with me, we are not going to hide this anymore, because hiding it is what they want. John from Diva TV. Hi, John. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, what these people are doing today, is there any specific law that they're breaking or is it a pretty gray area? I'd say it's a pretty gray area. Most place, most jurisdictions have some kind of rule against disposing of remains in other than, you know, the sort of approved fashion. It's usually like a health code kind of law rather than a, a criminal law. I didn't look up the law in D.C., but in New York, that's the situation. It's a misdemeanor. It's, you know, it's under the health code. So I don't know what will happen if they decide to charge them with that. Um, it sounded to me like they'd probably just charge them with demonstrating without a permit and let the ashes thing kind of go. But I don't know. It, it remains to be seen.
50,000 dead! Where was George? 150,000 dead! Where was George? 150,000 dead! Where was George? History will recall Reagan and Bush did nothing at all. History will recall Reagan and Bush did nothing at all. History will recall Reagan and Bush did nothing at all. George Bush, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. George Bush, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. George Bush, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Bring the dead to your door. We won't take it anymore. sad one. The quilt makes our dying look beautiful, but it's not beautiful. It's ugly, and we have to fight for our lives. My name is Phyllis, and I'm a woman who's been living with AIDS. Um, and what I'm really here to say is I also have not been politically active, but just being here this weekend and walking from the quilt was so much like, what is this all about? I am so, so grateful to everyone that's in ACT UP, that fights with us and for us, and that 
just has the spirit, the passion to keep fighting. You know, uh, I just love you all and thanks so much. Well, look, it looks like we're going to get rained on, so we even timed this perfectly. Two last things. The first is, when you leave here, when you leave here, leave in groups. The police like to pick individuals off.